So today we'll take a look at projectile motion. Now, what projectile motion is clearly is the motion of a projectile, but that really needs us to examine what a projectile is. And for our purposes in year 11, 12 physics, we're going to define a projectile as an object whose motion, so that moves, only under the influence of gravity. So the projectile motion is often in the context of some object, like a rock. You're going to launch it. We're going to launch it at some angle and at some velocity. And if you throw it into the air, it will kind of do this kind of thing. So we'll call that general idea of projectile, the motion, this entire trajectory, the path it takes, is what we're going to be considering about with projectile motion. But what firstly is a projectile? It's an object that moves only under the influence of the gravitational force, in other words, the weight force. And if we're saying that about the projectile, then one thing important to recognize is, in other words, no other forces act on this projectile. And if no other forces act on this projectile, then a key thing that we are basically saying is that there is no air resistance. In real life, of course, there will be some air resistance, but depending on the situation that may or may not be negligible, we are basically saying for our analysis, it's not important and is to be ignored. In more advanced courses, you may take air resistance into account and you may still that, pull that projectile motion or not. For our purposes here in our course now, air resistance is basically just going to be completely ignored in our calculations. Yeah. We might be talking about what would happen if there is air resistance, but we won't get into calculations on it in physics. Okay. In, in, in you know, high school, year 11, 12 physics that we're yeah. talking about here. All right, so this is the idea. Now, the key points again, moves only under gravity and no air resistance. Now, if you think about this, you've actually done projectile motion before. You've done projectile motion more than, oh, basically a year ago when you had, for example, someone goes to the top of a building or a cliff and they drop an object. And this object just drops down, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you drop an object, then it is only acting, ignoring air resistance. You, it is only affected by gravity, right? Mm -hmm. So the net force is just negative mg downward. If you think of your free body diagram, it's just the weight force. And so that literally is a projectile motion. It, however, is not a very interesting projectile motion. This is 1D. It only moves up down. There is no left right component involved. You are simply dropping the stone or the book or whatever you're dropping and it goes straight down. But it is technically projectile motion, but not generally what we mean. When we say projectile motion, we are normally having launched the object in some way. We could launch it horizontally, in which case it will do something like this. Or traditionally, we'll launch it at some angle and velocity, it'll do something like this. And the point is projectile motion is now a 2D question. It's no longer a 1D question that you were doing early in the year, but now we are progressing to a two-dimensional problem. All right, so let's consider some examples of projectile motions. So any examples you can come up with? Uh, throwing a rock. Yes. Yeah. So if you throw a rock, a rock generally doesn't have any other forces on it. So throwing a rock would be fine. Anything else? Uh, kicking a ball. If you want to kick a ball, any others? Um, just uh, throwing something in general. 
Yep. So you can throw um, or kick. Yep. And just no sort of normal object. Anything else? Um, there's lots of variations on this. You could throw it, you could kick it, you could hit it, you could bash it, right? You can use a racket, hit with racket, or club. So golf ball, tennis ball, table tennis ball, although that's getting a little bit, anyway. So you, you can do all sorts of things like that. Is there anything else other than throwing, hitting, so forth, an object? Um, as in like, maybe like... Uh, hmm. So, I guess just trying to broaden the, I mean, you'll probably be fairly clear when you do the question, but there's obviously those things we're talking about, depending on how you launch the projectile and this just being a normal object, but other things that people may not be as familiar with, but usually it's the same kind of concept. If you were to fire a bullet from a gun, the, the bullet counts as a projectile because it only it falls under gravity, or if you were to fire an arrow from a bow, or if you were to fire a cannon from a, you know, a, 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 like an artillery shell, we will consider those um, projectiles as well. In addition to that, there are other projectiles as well. So for example, if you are the projectile, can you come up with any sort of situations where you are the projectile? Um, maybe... Mm. Maybe like uh, skydiving or something like that? Um, I guess, although skydiving is a bad example because skydiving, um, the reason why you don't fall to the ground at very, very high speeds, higher than what you already are, is because air resistance slows you down. So you reach terminal velocity very quickly. But, but basically, anytime you jump in the air, you're, so any sort of jump, right? If you jump off a ledge, if you were to jump into the air, so hurdles, yeah. Um, if you were to do long jump or high jump, once you've left the ground, you're, you're basically a projectile. Anytime you want to dive into the pool, that's basically you're a projectile once you lift, leave the diving board. And then other examples might be things like if you have a hose and you're running water out and it fires it into the air, so water from a hose or a sprinkler. So that hopefully gives you some idea of the range of things that we can consider projectiles. There is a reasonable range there. It doesn't cover everything, of course, but hopefully it should make it clear. And what might not be projectiles? What is not a projectile? Well, it has to really violate our assumptions our assumptions is that really the only force acting on it is gravity, and then there are no other forces such as air resistance. So what things go through the air that you may or may not think of as projectiles, but they actually aren't by our definition. I suppose a paper airplane would not generally be considered a projectile. And the reason for that is because, I mean, if you think about throwing a paper airplane and throwing a rock, they don't really act the same way. Right? The pepper airplane yeah. has lift. Right? It, it's got lift from the wings. And for that same reason, gliders aren't really projectiles, whether or not, even if there's no power. Planes are not projectile, even if their engines are off, because the wings are still there. Right? Yeah. And certainly, what aren't projectiles are like rockets or missiles, because, well, they literally have their own power. Right? Things that have their own power, but for example, where the air resistance is quite high, so things like feathers, would clearly not behave like projectiles. So now we've established what projectile, mo what projectile motion is, it's the motion of these sort of objects. Now we kind of need to sort of study it. 
And the really, the key point is that it is a 2D motion. So there are, there is, we can split it into what we call horizontal and vertical components. And one really key point, and you could get asked multiple choice questions about this, is that basically Galileo, having done some experiments and so forth, is that the horizontal and vertical components act independently to each other. So what we're saying with this is that the horizontal will do its thing and the vertical will do its thing. The horizontal and vertical together make up the projectile motion, but the horizontal and the vertical themselves do not affect each other directly. So if you think about this, your object that is a projectile, what are the forces that act on this projectile? Um, gravity. Um, which is W equals mg downwards. Are there any other forces acting on this projectile? Uh, like the initial force when like you throw it or kick it or whatever. Did that be one? So we'll leave that aside for the moment. We'll talk about that. Are there any other forces on top of that? So there's the weight force pulling it down. Are there any other forces? There's the force you mentioned that we'll talk about. Are there any other forces? Uh, what was that definition of a projectile? Uh, an object that is influenced by gravity. Right. Which means, are there any gravity. other forces? Uh, no. Right. So you might find that a little bit confusing because, well, clearly to project it into the air, some sort of force had to be applied. And while you're not wrong about that, one thing that I think confuses students a lot is when we talk about the projectile motion, we don't, we're not talking about the launch, right? We don't care how it got launched. We don't care about yeah. if it was a gun that fired the bullet or if it was a string that projected it and so on. Of course, force is required in some way, shape or form to get it moving in the first place in some direction with some velocity. That is true. And so the, the bullet, for example, would accelerate in the barrel of the gun. But we're not talking about when it's accelerating through the barrel of the gun. That's not our purpose in projectile motion. That, that is a separate question that you can ask based on your year 11 work in dynamics. But we're focused on after it leaves the barrel. We don't care about how powerful the barrel is. We just care about at the end of the barrel, what was the speed it left at and at what in what direction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So once launched, the, in, the, the force that launched it doesn't have any effect anymore. So once launched, the only forces acting on it is the weight force and we ignore air resistance. So and that, like is the section, it, right? that is the section, yeah, we're ignoring air resistance. And that blue section is the section we're talking about. We don't care about how it's launched. That is a separate question in and of itself, which is not usually asked about when you're talking about projectile motion. Right? Yeah. So this is your free body diagram. So keep in mind that this is your free body diagram of your forces on your projectile. Are there any horizontal forces on your projectile? Um, I would say no. So the net horizontally, your net force horizontal is zero. Are there any vertical forces on your projectile? Uh, the gravity. And is that up or down? Uh, down. And what is the magnitude? Uh, 9.8 or 
negative 9.8. Well, that is G, but that's not the force. How do we calculate the force? Uh, are we doing mass times gravity? Yeah, you need to get the mass. So that means it's going to be downward, which will represent by negative mg. By convention, to the right is positive, to the left is negative, up is positive, down is negative. So as a result, the net force horizontally is zero, and the net force vertically is negative mg. And so that's one of the critical things you need to understand for projectile motion. We'll now take this and then apply it further to get us some equations um, for projectile motion. And then we'll talk, take a look at what that all means after a while. So let's take a look. <laughs> 